Hello, hello, welcome back to my second channel. Welcome back to Jack in the Books. Today, new setting unlocked. I am in Dublin. I'm in Ireland for the second time in my life. I came here once before when I was 18 months old. I remember it fondly. <laughs> I actually remember absolutely nothing. So to me, this feels like coming to Dublin for the very first time. And I'm so excited. I've heard there's some really gorgeous bookstores and an amazing library, which I am heading to in like 45 minutes. We just got the coach from the airport and now we're at this beautiful hotel. Let me show you. This is a gorgeous hotel room. Look at this. We have a smeg. I feel like in my head, a smeg is the height of luxury. If one day I have a smeg, I'll have one at life. I will be buzzing. That This will be my sign of success if I ever own a smeg. And how cool is this? They have a record player and there's some records down here too. So I might have a party. So this is called the Dean, I think. Look at me positioning my shot to get the smeg <laughs> in the video. It's so cool. Look at it, just chilling right there. Just literally, it actually is cool. A fridge is cool. That's the whole purpose of a fridge is to cool things. <laughs> Anyway, I'm here in Dublin because I'm actually being given an award, <laughs> which is so crazy. Basically the Phil, which is the Philosophical Society here at Trinity College Dublin, which is actually, fun fact, the oldest student society in the world. Basically they reached out to me and they were like, hey, we want to give you the same award that we have given to Oscar Wilde. And I was like, <laughs> is this a prank? Because that puts the wild in Oscar Wilde. Uh, and it turns out, no, very much, I'm now here <laughs> in Dublin and it's happening, it's real. The award is for contributions to literature, which is so cool, because obviously, you know, that's my one true love right there. So I feel really, really lucky and grateful and fortunate to get to be here and to get to see Dublin. And so I thought, you guys should come with me. And I was just kind of in the mood to vlog, so I thought I would make this a kind of three part video series thing. So today we're gonna go and see one of the oldest libraries in the world and it looks absolutely amazing. And I've got my um, talk at the Phil, which is why I'm kind of dressed like this. You know when you see people dressed for like work on the plane and you think like, oh, I wonder what you do. I'm hoping I was radiating that energy today. I, I might not have done, but <laughs> that's what I was trying to conjure up. And then tomorrow, which I think I'll do as a whole separate video, I am gonna do a big bookish day because I wanna go and see all of the bookstores, every single one. And I think that'll be really fun. And then I'll do a book haul because like inevitably, <laughs> I'm gonna buy some books, right? So this is the outfit that I went for after like just a little Menti B last night. Just a little one, just a li little small one. Just cause I was like, what does one wear <laughs> to an event like this? So, you know, you try on every item of clothing that you own and suddenly nothing matches at all. That's kind of what happened, but I managed to Mix and match, there's jaded London trousers, which I think are so fun. And then this blazer from Moss, and then a Ralph shirt. Did someone say fashion? <laughs> if they did, they might have been mistaken. <laughs> so obviously, because I knew I was coming to Ireland, I made sure to pack a book by an Irish author, and I accidentally read the whole thing, <laughs> like on the plane. Partly because I was just absolutely loving it, and partly because <laughs> the flight was delayed, but I honestly don't mind because I was having a great time. And actually, this has become one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. It's a short story collection, but I just thought it was great. It's called Hearts and Bones, Love Songs for Late Youth um, by Neve Mulvey. And although the writing is pretty straightforward, it really packs a punch, and one of the stories got me like, <laughs> I had shivers all over my body and I was just on a plane. And I always think it's so cool when just like words on the page in black and white can do that to you, you know? And actually two of my favorite books that I've read, and if not my two favorite books that I've read so far this year have been Irish. So I felt like this is the place where I need to be. Damn, I've been struggling to find the lighting in that room this whole time and it turns out the bathroom is like a movie set. <laughs> we're gonna head to um, Trinity now. We have to be there in 30 minutes, but we haven't eaten all day. So we're gonna try and find some food en route. Um, and if I do this talk with a McDonald's cheeseburger stuck in my teeth, everyone don't mention it. This is the rooftop. Look at that view. Holy moly. I think if I was a seagull, that is exactly where I would sit too. That's the best seat in the house. Nicely done, sir. 
Nicely done. Look at that. I'm absolutely buzzing. So the hotel is actually right next to a nightclub apparently. So that's fun. Copper face jacks, well, it's got my name on it. Mum's here by the way. Professional mummager. I went to a literary festival where with mum as my plus one and was like going around actively telling everyone that she was my mummager. <laughs> but after like by the end of the weekend was kind of forgetting to clarify that it was a joke. <laughs> so I feel like maybe some authors out there think that mum is actually my mummager and if so, great. Then we made it to Trinity College Dublin. It's so cool they made a whole university out of the place from normal people. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. Look how gorgeous this is. People have lectures here. I would come to lectures if they were here. <laughs> then we were very kindly taken on a tour of the long room, which is the main chamber of the old library. And it's 65 meters tall, filled with 200,000 of the library's oldest books. And it was so impressive and just stunning. It was actually built between 1712 and 1732. So that is old as hell, actually, um, and incredibly still in great condition. They had all these busts of iconic people. There's Socrates, um, an old harp. That was cool. Honestly, I was in heaven. I could have spent all day in this library. It was so beautiful. In fact, they had to raise the roof at one point because they had too many books, which actually might happen to my bedroom. Not gonna lie. That's a, an alarming possibility. So the roof actually used to be flat. That's why it's now kind of raised like that, which I thought was interesting. Also, there's nothing in here with the letter J or U because those letters literally did not exist in the Roman Latin alphabet. So I thought that was all very interesting. Um, this was just dark academia heaven. And then afterwards, we went to the Book of Kells, which is this museum all about one of the oldest books, the Book of Kells. Um, although you can't film the actual book. So just use your imagination. Um, they actually turn one page each day. So every time you go in, you see something completely different. And then we headed to my talk. I'm trying to get you the good signatures. <laughs> Find me a cool one. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a book that I'm signing. Oh, by the way. Hello, you. Mary. <laughs> Wait, oh wow, yeah. Mary Berry? Yeah, iPhone. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, Reggie Snow. Wow. Yeah, they're all the records. We have like 338 years of them. So. Wow. I can't believe I'm going to sign the same book as not only the President of the United States, but also Mary Berry. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, there's a sword and a disco ball. It's gonna be a good time. Apparently people are here, which is crazy. <laughs> I was so nervous that no one would come. Apparently people have turned up. <laughs> so that's a win, because I was nervous that it was just gonna be like me and my mom <laughs> in an empty room. So this is a success. <laughs> I then got to sign the book. I had a quick flick through first just to get some inspiration because I was like, what did everyone else write? Because I was so worried I was gonna write something really dumb. But eventually I settled on something and I signed it. And then this was the queue outside to get into my talk, which is wild and crazy. Look how sweet everyone is. Uh, I got to meet them all afterwards too, which was so nice. Um, the team from the film went outside and, and said hello to everyone and filmed them. This was the crowd. What? This is blowing my mind, even just watching it back. Um, this is me walking in. Everyone stood up and applauded. <laughs> I was losing my mind at this moment. This was so surreal. Before we begin presenting this award to Mr. Edwards, I would like to give a little bit of background on the award and what the film is ever to achieve. Throughout the world's oldest student society, I have a record presence of remarkable members, including Oscar Wilde, Bram Stoker, and Samuel Beckett, across 338 years of history. Today, we stand with over 10,000 members from every corner of the world. Each year, the Council selects a large number of new honor patrons to the society based on their outstanding contributions in their respective fields. This includes figures such as President Joe Biden, Martin Scorsese, Margaret Atwood, Elizabeth Day, Judith Butler, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, Dave Hanamir, Whippy Goldberg, and a wide range of Nobel laureates, world leaders, Olympians, academics, and Oscar and Grand Award winners. This year, our Council has elected Jack Edwards to the honor of receiving the Gold Medal of Honor Patronage for your outstanding contributions to literature, culture, and politics. I did my talk with Ellen, who is the president of the Phil. She was a great interviewer, by the way. We had such a nice chat. And then the audience asked questions. And that was so fun. 
the energy in the room was so lovely. Everyone was really warm and welcoming. And yeah, afterwards I stayed for like an hour and a half meeting everyone, which was the best. Someone brought me hummus, someone had my book. It was just very overwhelming and I appreciate it so much. Um, so thank you to everyone who came. Unfortunately, at this point, my camera battery died, but I just went back to my hotel, we had dinner, and I just took it all in and felt very grateful. This is my first ever Guinness, and I'm nervous. Push him away, I'm still talking, I'm still talking. Gary, leave alone. Okay, it's good. It's good, and this is the perfect place to have it, right? <laughs> Apparently, this is Sally Rooney's favourite pub, so now it's my favourite pub. And actually, I'm fine. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much to Trinity College Dublin and the Phil for the honour and the privilege of getting to come and speak. I really, really appreciate it. And everyone who came to the talk um, and made me feel so at home. Thank you. Um, if you like this video, you can give it a like. You can subscribe if you're new. And my other Dublin vlogs will be coming very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Bye bye.